I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to this special worship hour. And God has given us a word today. I'm so glad that you are able to join us wherever you are. I believe that God will do something for you by the power of his Holy Spirit as we share from his word. The word for this hour, I have entitled it, What Do You Have? What do you have? And our reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 3. I'll be reading in your hearing, verse 1, all the way to verse 6. If you have your Bible, you're so much welcome to open it with me. Read it in any version that you like. The Bible reads, Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Mark the words, the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour. Verse 2. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Verse 3. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, the Bible says, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. I will repeat in your hearing verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What do you have is our sharing this hour. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we have come to listen to your voice. We have come just the way we are. Speak to us. I pray as I've prayed before. Hide me behind the cross. Let me be that nail that holds your picture so that everyone will not see me but will see you we'll see Jesus the crucified. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I love the early church. Right after Christ ascended to heaven, the early church is a church that we must learn from. And there are so many things that I love from the early church, but one of the things that I love from the early church is the fact that the early church was a victorious church filled with miracles, filled with Holy Ghost power. The early church had a great experience of Jesus' presence even though he was gone. Jesus was gone in person, but he was, he was there, if you won't mind, virtually. Mm. Jesus was with the early church, and I'm so glad that Jesus was with them, but there was an extra power that Jesus had promised to the early church, the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, Acts 12, verse 8, Jesus speaking to his disciples told them, you know what? One of these days, you will receive power after that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the outermost part of the earth. The Holy Ghost power was poured, and, 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 and in Acts chapter 2, we see the Holy Ghost power working. You and I, 
Bible readers can, can, can familiarize ourselves with Acts chapter 2, where when the Holy Spirit was poured out to the early church, the Bible is telling us in one day, 2,000 men were converted and were baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit. I love the, whole, I love the early church experience. And the Bible is telling us this church was so powerful to the extent that when you read the whole book of Acts, you see at some point that heavens had to come down to do miracles themselves. You remember the story of, of, of Paul and Silas in a prison that God had literally had to come down and shake the prison walls and gates and Paul and Silas were set free. Early church, powerful church, miraculous church and the other thing that we see from the early church, the early church was a praying church. The Bible gives us a very fascinating record in Acts chapter 3. One day, Peter and John are walking at the ninth hour, the hour of evening sacrifice. They are coming to worship as usual. If I could have time, I could have put more emphasis on the importance of coming together at the hour of prayer to pray together as a church. May God help us wherever we are. May he help us to remember to come together and pray together because there is power when we come together. That's why the Bible says where there are two or threes, I am in their midst. The Bible is not saying when you are alone. Yes, Jesus is with you when you are alone. But let me tell you, Jesus in you and Jesus in somebody else, when we come together, he is among us. And there is more power when church comes together to pray. Hallelujah, somebody. May you be reminded, my brothers and sisters, the importance of coming together to pray. I don't have much time. Let's keep on reading. But the first church, the early church, was a praying church. The Bible is telling us from this story that we have, we have read, there was a man who was being brought at the temple, but be careful when you read this text, because the first thing I am seeing, which is very problematic, this man is said to be lame from his mother's womb. And then, and then the Greek word for a man that is used here is, is, is giving us uh, a, a, a more detail of this man that he was a man of, of, of good years. Because the, the Greek word aner for, for a man here can also be used for a husband. So, 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 so he was at least 21 years old from the traditions of those days. So he was a man of good age who was being carried from his home place, brought to a church. Now, 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 listen, why is this so important? Because I know few days ago, Jesus used to come to the same temple. So, 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 so since this man was alone from his mother's womb, something clicked to my mind that this guy had the opportunity to come and meet Jesus in person. But you know what? The problem with this man is he had people who brought him to the temple, but they never brought him into the temple. They left him outside. This guy was a lame. He had good friends with good intentions. But the problem is, they brought him to church. But instead of bringing him inside the church to meet Jesus, they left this man outside the church, outside the temple. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, we have many people with good intention. We go to them. We, we need help from them. We need spiritual help from them. We need financial help from them. We need social help from them. The problem with the people we go to is instead of them to bring us to the right place where we can get help, they leave us at places where it's kind of more convenient 
with what they think is right to be done or convenient for us to be. Notice, they leave him at the gate. The gate by itself is called beautiful. But I'm here to tell you, don't be deceived by the name beautiful because this gate has been called beautiful, but this man has never received any beauty from that gate. You can be going to a beautiful church, but if you don't get the proper healing from Jesus, the name of the church will not save you. You can be going to a beautiful job, but if that job, the only thing it does is to give you stress, my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, you better get out of that place because as much as it is called beautiful, it's a beautiful job, it's a, it's a beautiful church, it's a beautiful relationship, as long as it is not bringing you closer and closer to Jesus, please get out of that place. Because this man has been bringing this guy right here. And Jesus was here in person. They could have said, hey man, enough is enough. We are not leaving you here at the gate. Let's bring you inside. Because the Bible is, is giving us a story of another lame person who, who, who had similar friends. These guys realize there is power in Jesus. And the Bible is telling us these men brought this man to Jesus. And when they found that they couldn't get through to, to, to where he was, they went on top of the roof. And the Bible is telling us they, tear, they teared up the roof and they brought this man down through the roof. And what happened to this man? The Bible is telling us Jesus healed him. These are two stories that happened when Jesus was on this earth. There was one man who had good friends who knew where to bring this person. And here is another man that he is he's of good years and he has friends. He has good people. They might have good intention, but the fact that they didn't bring this man to Jesus is a problem. And I'm here to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if you have friends, if you are in a relationship, if you are in a particular job, but that job or that friend or that relationship or that church is not bringing you closer and closer to Jesus, get out of that place immediately, no matter how or no matter what that place is called. It might have a beautiful name, but the beautiful name will never save you. It might be a good re relationship, a beautiful relationship, but if it's not bringing you closer to Christ, get out of that place immediately. Or seek for the right people, seek for the for right places, seek for the right church where you will be drawn closer and closer to Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. This guy was lame, laid on a beautiful gate, but from his mother's womb, he was still lame. And the question is, how long do you want to continue to be lame? Change your perspective. You don't need to continue to be lame. Change your perspective. Change people around you. Get people. Why am I saying change your, your, your perspective? Simple. If this man could have had a different perspective, he could have even asked these people to, to take him where Jesus is. Because I'm sure... He was lame, but his ears were working. He heard about Jesus. He heard about his fellow lame person, a paralyzed person who was healed by Jesus. He had lots of miracles, but, but he had wrong perspective. Why am I telling you this? Because the story tells us, here comes Peter and John. They are walking, going inside the temple. As they come, Peter and John Sees, see this guy. They looked at that guy. They looked at him because the Bible is telling us, uh, um, Peter, they fastened their eyes. They looked at him with intention. 
I wish I could have time. But after they did that, the Bible is telling us they, 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 they actually told the guy, look at us. <laughs> and this guy, the Bible is telling us, he turned, he looked at them. But what is he expecting? Alms. Little coins, little money that could surface his maybe daily needs. He was so limited. And I'm here, my brothers and sisters, talking to you because we are so limited. When God is telling us to look at him, we are so limited on our demands. The only thing we see is the things of this earth, the little things here and there that will surface for our daily bread. That's the only thing we are looking at when God asks us to come to him and bring him and reason with him. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's what, that's who we are. Unfortunately, we are so limited. This guy looks at Peter and John. And the only thing he's seeing from these God's people is the possibility for arms. In his mind, he's not seeing greater miracles than simply arms. And the question is, when God is calling you right now to look at him, when God is calling you through his servants to look at him, what is your focus? What does your brain process? Do you process bread? Do you process greater things apart from bread? What is your perspective? And that can easily be answered by your daily prayers. What do you normally pray? When you wake up in the morning, what do you normally pray? When you think of great things that God can do for you, what do you normally think? You know, we are so limited to the extent that we have brought God down to our limitedness. May God help us so that when he speaks to us, we will open our minds to see greatest things that God can do to us. This guy, the Bible is saying, he looked at them with the hope of receiving just alms, just little coins that will eventually make him come back again the next day because what's little coin? He didn't realize that his problem was beyond the little coins. And I'm here to tell you, your problem or your challenge is beyond the little pain that you are experiencing right now. Your challenge or your problem is deeper than your financial pain that you are going through right now. Your problem is deeper than the marriage conflicts that you are going through right now. Your problem is deeper than the little conflicts here and there that you experience in your family. Your problem is deeper than that. And it really needs the Holy Ghost power. And it needs godly people to see the deep root of your problem and to speak healing in it. That's what is happening. Peter looks at this guy, and the Bible is telling us, he tells this guy, you know what? I don't have silver, I don't have gold. And to my imagination, after this guy hears this, he somehow, I mean, if, if, if it was me, I could have turned away to start focusing on other people who are walking in, because these guys have nothing. Why? Because of his perspective. And exactly, that's who we are. When we go to church, and preacher comes up and, and tells us about the deeper things that we truly need, we kind of turn away because that's not what we want. Or when they tell us, hey, hey, you know, you are here, but there is no hope for the things you are hoping for, we turn away. 
That's how we do it. But let, and let me tell you, God is so merciful. Even when we turn away from his people, from his word, even when we turn away from the false expectations that we have of him, when he tells us, you know what, my child, that's not what you need. That's, I, I mean, I don't have that for you because I know that's not what you need. When we turn away from him, Peter didn't stop from there. Hallelujah. The same way God will never stop. And I will tell you why didn't Peter stop. The Bible is telling me. Hey, listen man. We don't have silver. We don't have gold. But what we have. What we have. Is what we will give you. And the question is. What do you have? Peter and John looked at this guy and told this guy, you know what? We have more than what you want. We have more than what you expect. We have more than money and silver and gold. We have more than just simply the joy and happiness that material things will bring to you. We have more than that. We have Jesus. Hallelujah. He looked at that man, Peter, and told the, that man, you know what? I have Jesus. I have the name of Jesus. And that is enough. That is more than silver and gold. That is more than these, uh, these fake smiles that we normally put when we receive material things. When we have Jesus, we have everything. What do you have? And he told this guy, in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. You know the rest of the story. This man rose up and walked. What do you have? You who called yourself a believer, what do you have? What are you proud of? Are you proud of your wife? Are you proud of your husband? Are you proud of your children? Are you proud of, of the beautiful cars that, you cars that you have? Are you proud of that beautiful house that you have? Are you what do you have? What are you proud of? What is one thing that you can stand before people and say, you know what, I might not have anything, but if I have this, this is more than everything. And I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, everything will pass. But those who will have Jesus in their hearts, they would have collected everything in this world. Everything that this world can have. What do you have? One, pop. In the history of, in the church history, one time told one priest, you know what? We don't need anything. Because look at us. He was talking of the Roman Catholic Church. Look at us. We have everything. We have money. We have silver. We have gold. We have everything. And this priest looked at that Pope and told him, you know what? That's why. We can't tell people, rise and go. This is what that priest was talking. Or is telling us right now. Those people who are proud of any other thing. And they are not proud of having Jesus. They don't have power. They don't have spiritual power. They can't stand in times of storms. They can't, they can't have peace that only comes from Jesus. They can't have joy that only Jesus can give. What do you have? What do you have? This is my prayer. That we will not boost on anything apart from having Jesus in our lives. We will not boost 
about anything unless having Jesus in our families. Because our lame families, families that are not functional, families that can't go forward, our lame brains that can't work properly, our lame attitudes or characters can only stand and walk if we invite Jesus and the power of his name in our lives. What do you have? What are you proud of? This hour, I invite you. I invite you to the words, beautiful words of this songwriter who said, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. What do you have, my brother and my sister? What do you have? What do you have? As you listen to this song, may the Holy Spirit impact in your heart the desire to have Jesus, the desire to be proud of his name, the desire to have his imputed righteousness in your heart and be proud with humbleness with it. May God bless you as you listen to the song. Silver gold, I'd rather be his than have riches and tall. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be by his nail the peace ten. I'd rather have Jesus than man's applause I'd rather be faithful to his Cause I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be the king. Of a vast domain will be held in sin's dress way. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world. Oh, be 
held in sin's dress well. I'd rather have Jesus not anything this world affords to What do you have? Would you rather have Jesus than all the pleasures of this world? Would you rather have Jesus than happiness that is brought by material things? Would you rather have Jesus than the fear you have of how would you be seen by people by choosing to do his will, choosing to be faithful, choosing to be honest? What do you have, my brother? What do you have, my sister? As I pray to, for you right now, it's my humble prayer that you will choose to have Jesus more than anything. Let's bow as we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts this day. Thank you for that brother. Thank you for that sister who is watching and following us right now. It's my prayer, O oh Jesus, that you will enter their hearts. You will make a special impact and fill that special void that was created by you and your love. I pray that you will bring these people of yours to understand the importance of having you and only you in their lives. Lord, sometimes we chase money. We chase what we call good life here. And at the end of it, we are so empty. And we are lacking. We don't have peace. We are still struggling. Lord, it's very clear that nothing will be enough. But if we have you, we have everything. So Lord, I pray that you will fill our hearts this day. And you will allow us to be proud that we have you. And we have your name, your character that we can stand with. Not only now, but until that day when we will see you coming in glory. Save us and help us to take your name with us everywhere we go. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. May all the saints say, Amen.